Worm farms are a great way to turn your leftover organic waste into a rich fertiliser, especially if you live on a small block or in a unit. They can even be placed on a balcony. All you need is a cool, well-shaded spot. Compost worms have the ability to convert your organic waste into a rich soil called vermicast or worm castings, high in soluble nutrients and beneficial microbes. The liquid from a worm farm is called worm leachate. This is different to worm tea, which you can learn how to make in the products and their garden benefits section of this DVD. With the right conditions, worms can reproduce every two to three weeks, so numbers can increase dramatically within a short period of time. But worms are smarter than us and will not overpopulate their home. There are 350 different species of worms in Australian soils, but only a few will thrive in a worm farm. Compost worms, such as red wrigglers, tiger worms and Indian blues, are best for producing organic waste. The larger African night crawlers don't like the smaller worm farms, so these are best suited to worm farms in a bathtub. You can source these worms from one of our many Noosa worm farms. Most small commercial worm farms start with a thousand worms. If starting a larger style farm in something like a bathtub, then a minimum of 4,000 worms is recommended to ensure a density of population that will reproduce. They don't actively seek out a partner, they just bump into each other and make the most of the situation. There are many different types of worm farms on the market, or you can use an old bathtub, or create a worm tower from a 30 litre bucket. All commercial worm farms will have the basics. A drainage layer for liquid collection, multiple working trays, lid, tap and legs for elevation. They may also contain a bedding block. So setting up a commercial worm farm today, first thing we need to do is set up our liquid collection tray. I like to call it the basement. It's got lots of aeration holes at each leg. So we need to get our legs in place. Slap your basement down, five legs in place. There are some worm farms though that aren't sturdy with the legs. So like the rectangular models, I'd probably put those on a couple of Besser bricks just to make them nice and sturdy. There's our five legs. On this model, nice and sturdy. Next step, get your tap in place, which comes with your kit when you buy one. Quite easy to do. Nut it in here. Just make sure to always leave your tap turned on. That way the air can flow in and then the liquid can also drain out. Done. Bedding tray, this is where your worms will live. This is where your liquid will drain through and your castings will collect. So this goes in on top. Before you add your worms, add a piece of cardboard or some newspaper if you don't have it. This comes with the farm. So this goes into the bottom, nice and easy, and that covers the holes. Perfect. Then of course you need worms. So you need about a thousand worms to start off one of these small commercial farms. Get them from your worm farmer, beautiful little sack like this. But if you just throw them in there on their own, you're going to need some bedding. So the worm farm comes with this, which is your block of coconut fibre. You'll need to soak that in a bucket of water until it looks like this. This is ready to go down for the bedding for your worms. So add this to your worm farm. Beautiful, easy bedding. Even better than this is compost and some aged manure. Your worms will love that, but this core fibre will do the job. Then you can grab your thousand worms, add them to the bedding. In you go, fellas. Beautiful. So you've got yourself a really nice population of worms there. Always make sure you get your worms from a worm farmer. Then what you'll need to do is make sure that they feel nice and safe, cool. I've taken an old potato sack, an old hessian bag. I've soaked it in some water. I've cut it in half and then that can be laid simply on top. And then of course the last bit is the lid. Don't forget to always place that on top. Perfect, ready to go. 
Now we've set up our worm farm, the next step is finding the perfect location. We need somewhere that's shady and protected. We don't want downpours of rain hitting this. The ultimate goal is to keep it nice and constant temperature around the 18 to 25 degrees Celsius. Your worms will love it. So make sure that it is shaded and protected where you position your worm farm. Now, also with your moisture level, you want to make sure that your moisture level, when you pick up a handful of your bedding and you squeeze it, just a couple of drops of water come out between your fingers. Always make sure, as mentioned before, that you leave your tap turned on and something underneath there to catch that beautiful black gold that comes out. Watering cans are great because they only have a small entry and that means you're not going to get frogs and toads getting inside there. And now sit back and let them settle in. We set this little worm farm up about two to three days ago. This is a beautiful location for it on this little deck, really close to where you're going to be using it, accessing it from the kitchen. So this little guy has had two to three days to settle in and he's ready to feed. Now, worms will eat anything that is organic, but just remember, this is only a small environment. So things are gonna change really, really quickly for your worms if you put the wrong thing in and they've got nowhere to escape, so you must be careful with what you feed your worms. Worms eat anything organic, but in your worm farm, things can change quickly and worms can't escape. Vegetable and fruit scraps, tea bags and coffee grounds, as well as some shredded paper and cardboard are best. Avoid feeding your worms too much bread, meat and oily foods like dairy products or acidic foods like citrus or onion. They'll eat these but meat can smell and attract pests and citrus or onion can change the worm farm pH quickly. Now we know what to feed our worms but you have to be careful. You can't just throw in any old amount. Always remember to at least leave half of your worm farm without any food on it. And when you're feeding them, place it in a new area each time around the farm. Always, always cover up your worms with a hessian bag. It could be a cotton tea towel, even some newspaper. Just make sure it's nice and damp. This will keep the worms moist and it'll keep the surface dark, which is what they need to come up and feed. Also remember that your worms will change with the seasons. You might need to feed them more in the warmer months and less in the cooler months. So be very, very careful not to over feed your worms. It's best to start off with a little bit, less is best, and then move up to more and more. So now our worm farm has been at working away for a couple of months and we're ready to harvest. The trick to harvesting is stop feeding your worms for at least a week before you're going to harvest. Then it's time to put the extra working tray on. So take your lid off, take your hessian bag, your cloth, whatever you have covering your worms, make sure you take that off and you should have no food on top here. So the worms are ready and hungry to move up. Grab your spare working tray, which should look like this fellow. Make sure that your castings and your bedding here touches the bottom of this tray when you put it in. Worms can't jump through the air, so they need to be in contact to be able to migrate up and down. Now some people will just start putting food in here. That'll work, but it's gonna take a long time to build up enough bedding for your worms to wanna to stay up in this top shelf. Another way to get them to move up is to put something that they really love in here. So you can use something like compost. I've got a nice compost and manure mix here, and that'll make a good bedding as well as a good food source and encourage them to move up into this top shelf. Remember, they're nice and hungry and they're gonna to wanna to come after this food. So pop this in here. Perfect. You can keep adding more later. You might need more than that. Don't forget to cover it back up again, keeping them damp and dark. Pop your lid back on and keep doing that. Keep feeding them now. This will start to build up and your worms will migrate up in the top. In a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months time, we'll come back and we'll be ready to use this tray out in our garden. So it's been a couple of months now since we put this secondary tray on. Our worms will have moved up inside. There's a nice depth of bedding for them to live in. So now our mission is to harvest this tray full of castings to use on our garden. What we need to do is take off this top layer. Remember all your worms are in this top layer. So take them off. Positioning them on buckets is really easy to access and lift. Now remember these trays full of castings are gonna be really, really heavy. So you're going to need a nice friend like Adam here to help you lift this and reposition it. One to hold the basement while the other lifts. 
Beautiful. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate your help. So now we've got our castings here and we've got our worms here. It's time to put our worms back in their home, the poor little fellows. So back we go with our worms and this becomes our working tray as it was. Don't forget, cover them back up with your damp hessian bag. We want to keep them damp and dark and nice and happy for us. We can feed them normally with our fruit and veggie scraps around the farm. Lid back on, ready to keep working and producing the castings for us. And here's our tray ready to be used out in the garden. If you prefer to make your own worm farm, then try a bathtub. Clean and rinse the bathtub and elevate it off the ground. A couple of large bricks will work. Put a container under the drain hole or a pipe to direct the liquid out. Cover the drain hole on the inside with shade cloth to ensure it remains free of debris. Place a drainage layer of 50 to 100 millimetres of aggregate in the bottom of the tub. 20 millimetre blue metal works well. Cover with a very fine grade geotextile fabric to prevent castings from silting up the drainage layer. Now, you need to make some organic bedding for your worms. A mixture of coir fibre and straw pre-soaked in water is good to lay down first. Add some shredded paper if you have some. Add some compost and aged manure, but don't add chook manure to a worm farm as it creates too much heat. Water the bedding to make it just moist. A good test is to wring out a handful of bedding, only a couple of drops of water, that's great. You'll need about 4,000 worms to start off the bathtub. Then cover the worms with a piece of carpet underlay or hessian bags that are damp. This will keep the farm cool and moist. If the worm farm even seems dry, re-moisten this cover layer. Most commercial worm farmers use a mist spray irrigation system to add moisture. When you've got them in their new home, don't forget a rainproof cover. Old corrugated iron is good for this. It protects from heavy rain while still allowing airflow. After a week, start adding food at one end of the farm. This worm farm is much bigger, so more food can be added, but better to start small and add more later. Always leave half the bathtub surface with no food on it. To harvest the castings, wait until all the food is gone in the current location, then start feeding on the other side. Most worms will move to the new food. After a couple of weeks, harvest the non-feeding side and refill it with bedding. If you're into the simple life, then free range worm farming may be for you. A great way to do this is with a worm tower straight into the garden. Start with something like a 30 litre bucket or an old concrete or large plastic drain pipe that has a diameter of 300 millimetres or more and a length of 500 millimetres or more. Some say to drill holes, but it's not essential. It is essential, however, to cut the bottom out of buckets to allow drainage and access. Bury the bottom half of the bucket or pipe into your garden or under your fruit trees. Throw in some aged manure, add your 1,000 worms, put in some food scraps, sprinkle in some shredded paper or torn cardboard, cover with shade cloth and an old pot plant. This allows air in without allowing heavy rain and critters in. Your worms will migrate in and out, feeding at night and taking castings and liquid back out into your soil. You can even put compost in here and the worms will process it even further and spread it through the soil. Easy.